operating small steam boilers. A different type of gas burner and boiler design can give very good results in low temperatures. I rebuilt this excellent boiler back in 2018. It's a very unusual design. It has a large centre flue and about a third of the way in it changes to a fire tube boiler. It's not a water tube boiler, no cross water tubes at all, just a big flue which then becomes several fire tubes. I produced a video series at the time called Renovating an Old Model Steam Boiler. The boiler is mounted on a base with its own hand pump and water reservoir. After filling the water tank it's now time to connect the gas supply. This is the same commercial gas tank that I used in the last video about steaming in low temperatures. In the video series I experimented with the type of gas burner and the one that was the best of all was the one that fitted to it. This is a sievert gas burner head and it's a very small one with a long thin flame. This is the view down the centre flue and you can see the seven fire tubes. This is a very well made boiler. As I haven't used it for a couple of years it's not surprising that the hand pump doesn't work. That's because the stainless steel ball on the inlet is stuck. It's not that important at the moment because the boiler is over full to start with and using the convenient blow down valve I'm removing some of the water. Here's how I fix hand pumps when the balls are stuck. I'm applying a gentle heat. If I apply too much heat then the paint's going to burn off. The general idea is just to warm up the part so that the metal expands and releases the ball from the seat. And there we go, it's working fine. This clip is running at double speed. I just wanted to show how the pump pumps the water from the tank into the boiler. I'm filling the boiler to about the halfway point as shown on the water gauge. For this test I'm using a Stuart Models beam engine. This is one that I renovated a while back and once again I did make a series about that too. I'm using two pieces of thick walled silicone rubber tubing, one for the steam inlet held on with a cable tie and the other piece of silicone rubber tubing is just pushed onto the exhaust pipe. All I need to do now is refill the water tank and light the burner. The temperature outside is about minus two degrees. That's what it says on the display inside my car. And it's very cold in the workshop because I have both of the doors open to avoid any carbon monoxide issues. This burner doesn't generate enough carbon monoxide to trip the alarm, so really I could shut all the doors and be quite warm in the workshop. But the whole point of the episode is to show the engine steaming in a very low temperature. See how well the boiler is at generating steam to make the engine work. In no time at all, the boiler casing is getting warm. Not exactly hot yet, but warm. A few viewers have contacted me, suggesting all manner of ways of keeping the gas from chilling. I'd like to say, if you could possibly stop telling me how to do it, it would be a good thing. I'm aware of every trick in the book. Because these videos are designed for beginners, I cannot include any information regarding the several methods that are available to prevent the gas from chilling. Sitting the gas canister in some water, a bit more than I have here, usually stops it from chilling. To my surprise, the pressure gauge is lifting already. On the previous boiler that I ran in this low temperature, which was a centre flue boiler, with a ceramic burner, it took a lot longer than this to raise steam. Something called howling is a major problem with centre flue boilers, particularly when they are fired using ceramic burners. Time to run the engine, I think. I don't have a displacement lubricator on this engine, so I put some steam oil in the pipe and the rest of the lubrication for the entire test will be by the steam and the water. This boiler is not fitted with a superheater, so the steam isn't so hot, it's actually wet steam and it's the high content of water in wet steam that lubricates the cylinder. This beam engine is still a bit tight in places, so I think that by running it this way it should loosen up. The other end of the piece of silicone rubber tubing from the exhaust outlet is just pointing at the floor and you can see how wet the steam is, look how much water is coming out of the pipe. This boiler has no difficulty whatsoever, even with its small burner in this low temperature, it's providing more than enough steam to operate the engine. Have a look at the pressure gauge. With the engine running, the pressure seems to sit at about 50 pounds per square inch. Let me show you what's happening at the burner end. You can clearly see the very long, thin, powerful flame. It's not unduly noisy, even on full power. When I used a normal blowtorch head, the one I would use for silver soldering, it was far too noisy and it tripped the carbon monoxide alarm. 
Also because this is a small burner, it doesn't evaporate quite so much gas. So even without the gas canister sat in some water, it doesn't chill. I'm going to stop the engine and raise the pressure even further. And when the pressure reaches 60 pounds per square inch, the boiler's safety valve blows off. When you work with steam engines, you soon realise that there's always something to do. There's a definite sequential order. With a gas-fired boiler, there's less to do because you don't have to take into consideration shoveling coal into the firebox. As the safety valve is blowing off and wasting steam, now's a good time to pump some more water in there. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, today is quite cold at minus two. There's a heavy ground frost all over the garden, and just inside the workshop door, where I do the silver soldering and polishing and grinding, as you can see, the water tub is frozen. But back inside the workshop, even with all the doors open, the boiler is steaming very well indeed. I have enough water in the boiler, what can I do now? I think I'll turn the gas pressure down, that will stop the boiler from blowing off. And now the amount of noise coming from the burner nozzle is negligible. And that is about all I can say on the subject, so I'm going to stop talking and leave you with the sight and sounds of this engine and boiler combination steaming very well considering the temperature outside the boiler is still minus two degrees. I'd like to say stay warm, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.